is intended to be a quick follow-up to the last video. The last video I made was just to show that they're putting ingredients that have been banned in other countries into foods when they obviously don't have to. And to ask the question, why? Why is that? I've been seeing a lot of people on social media lately posting stories about how they go to other countries, they leave this continent and they go to other countries, and after being there not even for very many days, they feel better. And they recognize that that feeling of being healthier and feeling generally overall better, having more energy, less body aches, et cetera, et cetera, sleeping better, all of it, is coming from the food that they're eating being of higher quality. And the people who never leave this country don't have an outside perspective of seeing what that actually is in practice. I didn't until we went over to Europe for the filming of this movie we've been working on for five years. That was my first time really leaving this country. And I went to different various countries over there and I realized something. The food over there, you because I'm a label reader, I read labels like people read novels, okay? I'm all up in it. I want to know what's going in my body now. The labels over there, like in the UK, for example, you can read a label and it's very basic what's in that food. You do not need a high-level chemistry degree to interpret it like it's a Egyptian hieroglyphic tablet you found in a cave somewhere. You actually could just pick up something off a shelf and read the label and go, oh, this is what's in the food I'm about to eat. And you know what that is. It's amazing. And they have whole stores, like organic gas station-like stores. Do you know here in America, you, if you found an organic gas station, that would be like finding a flying unicorn or something. That They don't exist. You can't just go into a gas station and expect to find something responsible to eat hardly ever. You'll be lucky if they have anything there that's not filled with chemicals and additives. Good luck. But over there, whole, whole convenience stores that are organic. When I saw that, I filmed it. I couldn't believe it existed. I was like, wow, this is like seeing Bigfoot or something. I got to get this on tape so I can show the folks back home. <laughs> and what we have in this country in way of food protection is a ridiculous clown-like joke. We have something known as GRAS, generally recognized as safe, which when people hear it, Oh, the FDA says it's gross. They're like, oh, it's generally recognized as safe. But what does that actually mean? We generally recognize that it's safe? It has a safe costume on and we stare at it from across the room and we go, I generally recognize that says the word safe on it. I, I recognized it. That doesn't mean it's safe, though. It's a joke. So this is up on the Environmental Working Group website, which I referenced in the last video. This is a really great website for learning about what's going on in, in our food, in our skincare in our environment. It's a really good website for that. And it's talking here about exactly what GRAS is in very simple terms. Food and chemical companies are permitted to approve the use of new, potentially harmful additives and other substances in snacks, drinks, and more without the FDA's review or approval, all thanks to a regulatory loophole known as GRAS. Generally recognized as safe is a food category that was created by Congress in 1958. And when they created that, a lot of these chemicals didn't exist. And that designation was intended to apply to ingredients that most people know are okay. Basic things like chicken, water, salt. While the FDA usually has to approve substances intentionally added to food, that's not the case if it's designated grass. Once it's designated grass, that ingredient can bypass the FDA's pre-market review process, which allows all kinds of stuff to be put in our food that the FDA has never once determined is actually safe. The GRAS rule, finalized in 1997, created a voluntary notification system that lets manufacturers bypass federal regulators' review. Companies themselves can identify and use new GRAS ingredients, but are not required to share that information with the FDA. So that's the company saying, yeah, we said it's safe. We're the company that's going to sell that and make the money off of it. And we say, this is safe. We recognize that it's safe. And the FDA said, oh, you recognize it's safe? I guess we will too. Backpat handshake. That's how that works. This process has led to the addition of hundreds of chemicals to our food products without FDA oversight. Since 2000, food and chemical companies have used the GRAS loophole to approve 99% of new food chemicals. 99% have been approved through the GRAS loophole since 2000, according to a 2022 Environmental Working Group analysis. 
This leaves both the public and the FDA charged with regulating our food system in the dark about what's being put in our freaking food. Then they quote Michael Taylor, former Obama food safety czar Michael Taylor. We simply do not have the information to vouch for the safety of many of these chemicals. From this WAPO article, food additives on the rise as FDA scrutiny wanes. Michael Taylor, we have talked about many times. We used to make videos on food and stuff like this all the time. But Michael Taylor is a poster boy for how the revolving door between our government and the corporations that government is supposed to regulate works. So this is former Obama food safety czar, who was also vice president for public policy for Monsanto, who argued while he was practicing law with the firm King and Spalding, which actually represented Monsanto at the time, argued for the de minimis interpretation of the Delaney Clause, a 1958 federal law that prohibited the use of carcinogenic additives and chemicals from being put into the processed foods in this country. And in the 80s, Taylor's argument was for a de minimis interpretation of this. And the FDA went with, well, low exposure to chemicals found to cause cancer in animals be found safe under a, quote, reasonable certainty of no harm standard. Generally recognized, reasonable certainty. I mean, these are not, certainty is either certain or it's not. Reasonable certainty, what is that? It's just something that they made up. It's just a semantics argument. And none of this de minimis interpretation stuff really addresses continuous low-level exposure, which is what would happen if you have a little bit of it for breakfast and these things you eat, and a little bit of it for lunch and these other things you eat, and a little bit more for dinner and this other thing you, you drink and this other thing that you eat. And once you do that three times a day or however many times a day you eat, which everyone has to eat every day, then you don't know how, how that cumulative effect of having continuous low-level exposure is actually affecting you and irritating your body over time. And in the 80s, when Michael Taylor was doing this de minimis interpretation, the year before he put out his paper, Deborah Strauss, who was a law clerk to a chief judge in the U.S. District Court, and prior to that was a Food and Drug Law Institute scholar at Yale, wrote a different paper about this. And right on the very first page, she said... From its inception, a subject of great debate, the Delaney Clause is now claimed to be outmoded in large measure due to scientific advances in detection mechanisms as more food ingredients are tested for potential carcinogenity in animals, more are found indeed to be carcinogenic. Fully half of the substances the National Cancer Institute has tested for carcinogenity as part of its animal bioassay program have been deemed carcinogenic. So now they've detected all this stuff in the food supply. And she says, exposure to a low level of carcinogen thus has to be considered a risk for everyone. So that's the argument she was making. And then the following year, we have Taylor making his argument while he's working at the law firm that's representing Monsanto. It's enough to make you want to cheese grate yourself naked over a cactus. It's just insane. It's insane. And the thing is, is that the because they can argument of this loophole and this ridiculous system they got set up here, the because they can argument does not mean they should. Just because they can do that here, because our system is, is set up in such a ridiculous clown-like fashion, it doesn't mean they should. And in countries in Europe and Japan, where the governments have seen fit to outlaw these chemicals from being put in the food because they don't want their populations to get sick consuming them. Countries, by the way, which have higher life expectancies than we do here, just by the way, these corporations have shown they can make a different version of the same product that doesn't have that stuff in there. You see? See this? Why? They don't have to. They've clearly shown they don't. Heinz ketchup in the UK is tomatoes, vinegar, sugar, salt, spice, and herb extracts. Spice. Here, tomato concentrate, distilled vinegar, high fructose corn syrup, regular corn syrup, salt, spice, onion powder, natural flavorings. The point is, if they can make clean versions of these items to sell to countries where they don't allow these chemicals in the food, why do they put them in the food and feed it to us here? People want to argue, well, you shouldn't be eating some of that stuff anyway. Well, that's not really the point of this video. And the other issue with that is, is that people who don't have a lot of money buy stuff like this because it's calories and they can afford it. We live in a country where if you want to buy organic, you got to pay. You got to pay more to not have extra pesticides on your food. 
You got to pay more for health food. You got to pay more. Somebody in the last video made the comment, when they started putting up health food sections in the grocery store, people should have got wise to how this works. <laughs> right? Shouldn't our food be mostly healthy? How come the majority of our food is not here? Hmm? It's to the point here where we have headlines like this one from last year. U.S. food additives banned in Europe. Expert says what Americans eat is, quote, almost certainly, end quote, making them sick. That's a headline. They're just putting it in everyone's face. Yep. We know this is a problem. Experts are saying it. Hey, by the way, but in some Bernaysian-like magic trick, they've gotten people to separate the idea that what you eat is supposed to be for nutrition. It's supposed to give you the nutrients you need to exist. Eating is not supposed to be like a hobby just because of whatever tastes good. It's actually supposed to be for nutritional purposes. And sure, sometimes what tastes good, but People are putting up videos all over social media of what people looked like in, in the 70s. And they're saying, what happened to everyone? Look how, look how thin and healthy everybody looked in the 70s. By the time the 80s came, we had the de minimis interpretation of the Delaney Clause going on. And by the 90s, the grass loopholes. So, you know, take a guess. But it, it doesn't make sense that we have all of these autoimmune issues, diabetes, obesity, cancer going up, all these insane skyrocketing amounts of allergies. Gee, I, I can't imagine why. I can't, I can't, I can't put two and two together and add them and figure this out. It's just too hard. And we actually do have bills that have been introduced. We'll see what actually happens. A bill to direct the Secretary of Health and Human Services to update and clarify its rule on substances generally recognized as safe. Boy, wouldn't that be nice. Why is it taking all this time for them to figure this out? There's another one, too, that has to do with uh, Food Chemical Reassessment Act. These were both introduced last year. We'll see what happens, you know. But in the meantime, you should read your labels. You should read your labels and become familiar with these things because they've really gotten people to separate the idea that food if it's not something that agrees with your body, it can actually irritate the hell out of you. People don't usually think about what it means to have low-level activation of your immune system all the time from irritants, but it's not a good thing. Reading labels saved my life. I literally would not be talking to you guys right now if I hadn't started researching exactly what I was eating and how that could be affecting me years and years ago. I was a very overweight sick 30 year old who was on multiple medications things were not going well for me so you got to read your ingredients two websites that i recommend that are really good for information on on learning more about what's in food are the cornucopia institute and the environmental working group the environmental working group even has a food scores database where you can look up they've ranked 80,000 plus products food products on nutrients ingredients and processing concerns they even have an app and you could go to this, and I will put a link so you guys can all go check this out. They have a score. One is the best and 10 is the worst. And they score based on nutrition concerns, ingredient concerns like pesticides, food additives, all that kind of stuff, processing concerns. And you can type in a product like Zucaritas. And as you can see, on a scale of one being the best, 10 being the worst, they've given Zucaritas a nine. And then you can click on that and it can show you why that is, what the concerns are. And it lists it all out here with all the information and everything. It's probably way more information than most people want about their food. But at least it's something. It's an option. It's a way to educate yourself about what you're eating. Unlike the average doctor in this country where U.S. medical schools only offer 19.6 hours of nutrition education total across four years of medical school. I mean, where does that even make sense except in a clown world? And uh, I don't know. This stuff really pisses me off. I think if people really fully understood some of this, there would be a lot more pressure on Congress to not be allowing these things. Anyway, I love you guys. I made that last video just to make a small point because these things have to change. Nothing will get better until they do. Anyway, I love you guys. I'll talk to you soon.